What's Better Today? And welcome to the Leadership Advantage podcast by Dr. John Kenworthy. The Leadership Advantage isn't some magic pill or silver bullet to instant success as a leader, but I'm sharing the art and neuroscience of hacking expert leadership to unstuck your potential in life and work. Hey there and welcome to this edition of the Leadership Advantage. How strong leaders handle rejection and criticism and keep on keeping on. As you'll probably know, I just returned from a long and exciting trip to Israel where I was reminded that even the very best of us is rejected and criticised. It seems that it does not matter whether your intentions are to help and serve others. It doesn't matter if you're the kindest, the gentlest, the most loving and caring person the world has ever seen. You will face rejection. And you'll probably face rejection by those you truly would think should be the tribe you can most trust. Your own family, your own people. In fact, oftentimes, it's those closest to you whose rejection hurts the most. The chance of being rejected by someone used to be limited to our social and work circle and our dating pool. Nowadays, thanks largely to social media and technology, our posts, chats, profiles, pictures, everything can all easily be ignored, disliked or flamed by multitude of vague acquaintances. And rejection hurts deeply. Its wounds pierce our very soul and hit the core of our being. It has happened to you and it will happen again in the future. So how can we equip ourselves now to overcome rejection and soothe the sting of rejection? But before we dive into ways we can soothe our rejection, it will greatly help to understand why it hurts and what is happening inside the brain. Now, when researchers place volunteers in functional MRI, fMRI machines, asking them to recall a recent rejection, they found something astounding. When we experience rejection, the area that lights up on the fMRI is the same area activated when we experience physical pain. But social rejection is worse than stubbing your toe or even being punched in the face because physical pain diminishes over a short period of time. Research shows that even being rejected by a total stranger can simultaneously make you feel sad and angry. Indeed, your brain doesn't distinguish who or what is rejecting you. The same response applies, whether it's someone in your own group or someone you don't relate to at all, whether it's a human being or a computer rejecting you, being ostracised stings. Sadly, the greatest damage of rejection is self-inflicted. For most people, the natural response to being dumped by a dating partner or being the last person picked for a team is not to lick our wounds and get back on form, but to become incredibly self-critical. We feel disgusted with ourselves, call ourselves names, lament how we are truly not worthy and dwell on our shortcomings. This means that just at the moment when our self-esteem has taken a beating, we lay it on the ground and give it a good kicking ourselves. It's when that self-damaging refrain learnt from a very young age that I am not good enough repeats its toxic mantra. In the days of our long ago ancestors, rejection served a vital function. Being ostracised from our tribe in our hunter-gatherer past was akin to a death sentence, as you would be unlikely to survive long alone. 
the same area, actually the anterior cingulate cortex of the brain, that is constantly on the watch for danger or change in the environment is the same place that's scanning for those social cues that might point to a want of future rejection. It was so vitally important to continue to belong to a tribe that mimicking intense physical pain, well, it's just a terrific way to get our attention. And those who paid attention early were more likely to correct their behaviour and remain in the tribe. It's all happening in the primitive part of our critter brain. But as modern evolved human beings, we did not, unfortunately, evolve a more reasoned response that would negate the need to gain our vivid attention. Rejection still has a way of destroying a person's life in a way that few others can. And the number of people affected by rejection is staggering. So why do people reject or ostracize others? Few people who have rejected someone else can readily explain their reasoning. And that's because it has little to do with reason. Take a moment to test yourself for the last time that you rejected someone. Sure, of course, you can justify it to your own satisfaction. But what were the underlying causes? For some, it's the behaviour of the other person, something they did or did not do that you considered to be unacceptable. For others, it's because they don't share your values, your beliefs, your personality type or your societal conventions. Or they failed to meet your expectations of them. 99% of the time, it's one of these three things. So what happens when you're behaving badly? Sometimes people reject us because of our bad, that is unacceptable, wrong, ugly, contrary, different behavior in our interactions with them in such a way that makes them uncomfortable or upset. That is their brain registers our actions as something that they wish to avoid as it is deemed by their critter brain to be some sort of threat to the sanctity of the tribe. The chances are very high that we do not realise nor recognise anything wrong with our own behaviour. But then we judge ourselves by our intentions, whilst we judge others by their actions. We don't intend to make other people uncomfortable and probably don't consider anything about our behaviour as a reasonable cause for their reaction. Yet there it is. Our behaviour upsets them, which means that they are not rejecting us, the human being. They are rejecting our behaviour. And we can choose to change our behaviour. Or it's a clashing of the titans. People sometimes simply reject anyone whose values, beliefs or personality traits are incompatible with their own. The world is filled with people who have a different opinion on certain topics to their own. If you support the other party, or you pray to a different God, or pray to the same God, but in a different way, or support the wrong football team, and so many more labels that we might use to describe ourselves, even the colour of one's skin, your gender, or any choice you make. Some people hold their beliefs, values and life choices so tightly that they will instantly reject anyone who is not completely aligned. Others may simply choose not to trust you and hence partially reject us. And then there's the great expectations. When we don't live up to someone's expectations, we may be rejected, even if, in your opinion, those expectations are unknown or unrealistic for anyone else to expect. There are many parents who have rejected their child because they didn't get the right grades or follow the parent's preferred career path of a doctor, accountant, etc. There are ex-partners who expected you to stay young and fit as they grew old and round, or you became too clingy or too distant or too argumentative or too compromising. 
There are ex-friends who waited for you too many times or disliked it when you paid attention to someone else or you changed your religion. Whatever the reason for rejection, it hurts. Because reason is drowned out by the forward hitting emotion. That is, your brain chemicals have already done their work in your critter brain before you can consciously choose whether to override the feelings using your executive brain. So we've got to know how to respond to rejection. Your first reaction is likely to be a combination of sadness and anger. It's not unusual to lash out at someone close to you, both physically and emotionally. In fact, that may be your first noticeable sign that you are feeling rejected. Teenagers screech at their parents, husbands shout at wives, wives sob in the bathroom. As often as not, they're feeling rejected and may not even know it. Recognise that something is wrong and stop a moment to recall the trigger. If it's a feeling of rejection, that special cocktail of sadness and anger where you feel less loved, less oxytocin and more tense, ready to fight or run away, the adrenaline surging, then establish whether the trigger could have been your bad behaviour, a clash of beliefs or values, or your failure to live up to others' expectations. But why should I have to do this? Isn't it their fault, John? Well, remember, most of the damage rejection causes is self-inflicted after the event. Those rejecting you are probably not even aware and almost certainly don't care what you're going through. And they ain't going to change. But you can help you now. It is tempting to let our sadness and anger run its course. Maybe you'll feel better eventually. Maybe you'll tip over the edge and do something regrettable and irreversible. Fortunately, there are healthier and better ways to respond to rejection. Things that we can do to soothe our emotional pain, rebuild self-worth and curb unhealthy responses. Here are three, plus one more. The first one is kill your inner critic. In the aftermath of rejection, it's tempting to recite all of your faults and beat yourself up for whatever you did wrong. Stop it. Please do review what happened as factually and objectively as you can and consider alternatives for the future. But labelling yourself with derogatory terms such as I'm such a loser, I'm an idiot, they're not helpful thinking I should probably avoid talking about my political opinions at work. Yeah, that's probably fine. And please remember, most rejection are due to fit and circumstance. It's not personal. Unearthing all of your own deficiencies in an effort to understand why it didn't work out is unnecessary and is likely to be misleading. Second thing you do is revive your self-esteem. Yes, your self-worth has taken a big hit and it's important to remember what you have to offer. Remind yourself of all the attributes of yourself that are valuable. Things that make you a good teammate, a partner, friend, employee. Here's a little technique for you. It's really going to help. List five positive qualities about yourself that are important and matter and write them out by hand. If you're struggling to find them, I've got a list for you you can find on the show notes about positive qualities. Have a look at them. Think of the five that really resonate with you, that these are your five qualities. Write them out by hand, preferably, because that gives you an exacting memory. This is emotional first aid, and it will lift levels of oxytocin and serotonin in your brain, which will soften those feelings of rejection and replace them with acceptance and pride. So you've killed your inner critic, you've revived your self-esteem and you want to enhance your feelings of social connection. Remember, the other person or other people may not actually have rejected you. You just think they have. But you are a social creature. And we all need to feel wanted and valued by the social groups to which we belong or we would like 
to belong. Rejection destabilizes this need, leaving us feeling unsettled and untethered. And we need to remind ourselves that whilst one group or individual may have rejected us, we are valuable and matter to others. If your own team didn't invite you to lunch today, go and grab a coffee with your exercise buddies instead. When your partner ignores your text, call your mum for a chat and remind yourself the joy of hearing your voice brings to others. When your child gets rejected by the playground football pick, make a plan to hook them up with a different friend as soon as possible. And one more. When all said and done, there are some people in this world who are simply not going to like you. And that's okay. It's their loss. Sometimes there's a group of people where you want to be. They're cool kids, the elite clubs, the trendy set. The trouble is they don't want you. Maybe it's your behaviour. Maybe it's your beliefs. Maybe you make them feel bad about themselves. Maybe you're not rich enough, cool enough, pretty enough, talented enough. And it really is all okay. The simple truth is that they are not worthy of you. And that's their bad. Even the Lord Jesus was rejected and he advised his disciples that whoever does not welcome you nor listen to your message as you leave that house or city, shake the dust off your feet, breaking all ties with them. And that's across three Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke. Don't waste your weight, your honour, your glory, your respect. In Hebrew, they have a beautiful word for this. It's kavod weightiness on those who are unaccepted. For everyone else, accept one another, as Romans 15 tells us, and edify them and include them. Go out of your way. For those that reject you, dust off your feet. It's their loss. For everyone else, accept one another, edify, include and love them. greatly blessed. Bye for now. I hope that you really enjoyed this episode and will share some highlights with the people you care about most. My team and I are working on a series of exciting new projects in this art and neuroscience of hacking expert leadership to unstuff your true potential in life and work. To learn more, visit leadershipadvantage.com or just search for Dr. John Kenworthy and connect with me.